Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. For today's video, we're going to be taking an up close and personal in depth look at the all new 2016 Mini Cooper Clubman X. A big thanks and shout out to AutoNation for providing this vehicle today. For more information about their dealerships and current inventory, please feel free to check out their website provided in the description box below. As always, this will be an in-depth review of the Clubman. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, go over the performance data. We'll take it on a quick test drive and show you many of the unique aspects throughout the interior as well as exterior. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in, start it up, let it run. Our tester features Mini's optional comfort access system which allows you to keep the key fob in your pocket and lock and unlock the vehicle via the button on the driver and passenger side door handles. This example is finished in melting silver with the optional pure burgundy premium leather interior, a reasonably spec model with plenty of chrome accent and a high gloss black trim. When you first hop in the car, there's a little red light around the ignition toggle that starts to pulsate red. When you put your foot on the brake like you're getting ready to start, it pulsates even brighter. To start, all you have to do is just make sure you have the key fob within the interior, then simply put your foot on the brake and hit the little toggle switch in the bottom of the center console to go. The Clubman features speed proportional electrically assisted rack and pinion steering with torque steer compensation to provide a more direct and controlled response under harder acceleration. The steering ratio is 14.2 to 1 accompanied by a turning circle of 37.1 feet. It's all fed through a wonderfully contoured and thick 3 spoke leather wrapped wheel. A sportier John Cooper Works wheel is also available introducing thicker grip bolsters, perforated leather, red stitching, gloss black trim and signature badging. Your multifunction controls are located on the upper spokes along with subtle chrome trim surrounding the airbag cover. Thanks to the improvements made to the chassis and steering this go around, the Clubman is far more agile. It still carries quick and precise steering at both low and high speeds, but it seems smoother with a better balance of steering weight. As expected for a Mini, there's good overall road feedback for an electrically assisted system, making the driver feel more connected to the road. Like the Cooper hardtop, the Clubman is available with either a standard 6-speed manual or a 6-speed automatic transmission. For 2016 though, the Cooper S Clubman debuts a new 8-speed automatic option that's offered alongside the manual. As seen in our tester, the 8-speed is offered in two forms. The Steptronic gearbox features manual shiftability by using the gear selector, while the optional Sport automatic gearbox adds paddle shifters, quicker gear changes, and more aggressive shift points when placed into sport mode. The setup is a big improvement over the previous Clubman. Along with delivering quicker gear changes and more responsive behavior, the transmission also uses a GPS sensor that works to alter the shift behavior based on the road layout ahead. The tech claims to prepare the gearbox for things like curves and intersections, so you always have the ideal gear selected for optimal performance. While not dual clutch fast, the 8-speed performs very well in quick acceleration even offers rev matching downshifts. All Coopers now have a Sport and an Eco mode in addition to the Mid mode which is basically your normal everyday setting. It's activated by a turn dial below the gear selector. With S models you can also opt for adaptive dampers which work in tandem to the different modes. When placed into Sport mode the throttle becomes more responsive as do the gear changes. In Green mode the car becomes more relaxed, shifts earlier and modifies the climate control all in an effort to maximize efficiency. With the automatic transmission, there's also a coasting function that decouples the drivetrain at speeds above 30 miles an hour as soon as you remove your foot from the throttle, allowing the car to roll at idle, minimizing fuel consumption. An electronic parking brake and auto start stop feature are standard. So let's go ahead and flip on the optional automatic LED headlamps, LED fog lamps, as well as the hazards. 
All four windows are fully automatic. Next, we'll go ahead and check out the exterior. Upon closing the door, the interior will chime in time to let you know it's lost detection of the proximity key fob. When the Clubman name was reintroduced for the 2008 model year, it followed a number of historical design principles set forth by the classic Morris Mini Traveler and Austin 7 Countryman. The uniqueness of it offered brand loyalists and fans of the original Mini Hardtop the versatility of a compact wagon without sacrificing the brand's iconic styling and fun to drive nature. When you think of it and keeping true with the core values of what makes a Mini a Mini, the Clubman was a brilliant idea. Aside from a stretched wheelbase and an accompanying increase in overall length, the previous generation, known internally as the R55, was pretty much identical to the hardtop. They shared everything forward of the B-pillar, including identical front and rear tracks, body width, and the majority of interior design. The differences were in the roof line, the club door on the passenger side, and the barn doors out back, making the car much easier to live with if you were hauling passengers and cargo on the regular. For 2016, the all-new F54 Clubman has been completely redesigned from the ground up, refining the concept set forth by its predecessor and creating a far more well-rounded and premium offering. For the first time, the Clubman has been developed as a separate model from the Cooper hardtop. Positioned as the flagship of the new Mini generation, it's the longest car the company has produced to date. On one hand, it's lost a bit of the R55's quirkiness with the adoption of two full-size rear doors, but by taking a more conventional approach, it should make the Clubman even more competitive in the ever-expanding segment of premium compacts. Pricing for the Cooper Clubman begins at $24,100, increases to $27,650 for the Cooper S, and tops out at $29,450 for the Cooper S All 4. With near bespoke levels of customization, the Clubman can get up there in price depending on what you opt for. Our tester stickers for around $37,000. The R54's wheelbase is longer by 4.8 inches, accompanied by an overall length increase of 12.4 inches. Width expands by 4.6 inches, while height increases by 0.3 inches. With that, interior space gets a significant boost, especially for the rear passengers. We'll hop in the back seat though later in the video. Styling takes a bold leap as well, looking more upscale this go-around. Following a similar suit as the new Cooper hardtop, the hood appears longer while the Clubman's comparably wider front and rear track and shorter overhangs give it a sportier, more planted stance than its predecessor. Chrome accented oval headlamps incorporate either standard halogens or optional LEDs. The partial LED tail lamps are now positioned horizontally to emphasize the sense of width while the brake lights are positioned in the lower rear fascia. New air curtains in the outer edges of the front fascia channel air around the front wheels to a set of air breathers just behind the wheels. They look cool and help reduce air turbulence. Along with other aerodynamic improvements, there's a model-specific roof spoiler out back. The Cooper S sets itself apart from the base car with more aggressive front and rear fascias. The upper front grille is a distinct mesh pattern with S badging. Of course, you have the prominent hood scoop along with the brake cooling ducts in the lower fascia. Out back, there's twin polished exhaust tips. Like the hardtop, the Clubman has certainly matured. While the increase in size the newest minis make it less of a true mini to some, it's important to keep in mind that the Clubman is still significantly smaller than other compact wagons. Its smallness is all relative to the time we live in. For example, it's 11.3 inches shorter in length than a Volkswagen Golf Sport wagon. I also believe that a mini isn't just about being small anymore, it's almost become an automotive lifestyle. Minis are not meant to be normal, they're about being different. Wheel sizes for the Clubman range between 16 and 19 inches in diameter depending on whether you're looking at the Cooper, Cooper S, or decide between one of the many optional wheel styles. In addition to John Cooper Works Sport alloys, both silver pendant and gloss black wheels are available. This example comes with the standard 17 by 7 inch silver vent spoke alloys. They're wrapped in 225-45 Pirelli run flat performance tires. All season tires are available as is a temporary spare tire. The Cooper S receives larger 11.6-inch internally ventilated front brakes for added stopping power over the base Cooper. The solid rear discs measure 10.2 inches. Also improving performance for the S are standard brake cooling ducts in the front fascia to reduce fade under hard use. Amongst a wealth of driver assistance and electronic safety features, there's also a brake-based torque vectoring system for the front axle. After disabling the stability control, torque is distributed as necessary by selectively applying the brakes to a spinning drive wheel when traveling through tight corners. 
Underneath, the Clubman features a fully independent suspension with McPherson struts in front and a multi-link rear. It's been thoroughly revised with model-specific geometry, updated components, a wider 2.5-inch front and rear track, as well as greater use of aluminum and high-strength steel to help lower the car's center of gravity and reduce unsprung weight. Two-stage adaptive dampers are optional, lending to more relaxed comfort or firm sport-oriented behavior on demand. All in all, the new Clubman drives better than ever. It's softer than you'd think, more refined if you will, but still firm enough to deliver the agility and level of road feedback you'd expect out of a Mini. It feels stable, solid, and sure-footed, managing road imperfections like a pro. Like the Mini hardtop, the Clubman is now available with things like adaptive cruise control, automatic emergency braking, pedestrian detection, forward collision warning, and an autonomous parallel parking system. Overall length is 168.3 inches with a width of 70.9 inches and a height of 56.7 inches. Wheelbase is 105.1 inches while curb weight for a Cooper S with the 8-speed auto is around 3,300 pounds. The Clubman is offered with a choice between two turbocharged engines, both more powerful and fuel efficient than the 1.6 liter engines they replace. The entry-level Cooper features a 1.5 liter 3-cylinder while the S features a 2 liter 4-cylinder. Based on BMW's new modular engine design, both engines share common design elements including cylinders that displace half a liter each, the same 82mm bore and 94.6mm stroke, plasma sprayed cylinder liners, direct fuel injection, and BMW's Valvetronic variable valve timing. Both also feature an aluminum block and head, dual overhead cams, and four valves per cylinder. With a single scroll turbocharger, the 1.5 liter engine develops an impressive 134 horsepower and 162 pound feet of torque, good for a 0 to 60 time of 8.7 seconds and a top speed of 127 miles per hour. That was easily the most significant addition to the Mini lineup. Compared to the naturally aspirated engine it replaces, the 3 cylinder brings an additional 13 horsepower and 48 pound feet of torque to the table. Peak torque is also available much sooner in the RPM range, leading to improved acceleration. As of experience, the base engine no longer feels like a base engine, with respectable performance is certainly worth considering. On the other hand, if you prioritize performance, the 2 liter which uses a twin scroll turbo pumps out 189 horsepower at 5000 rpm and 207 pound feet of torque at 1250 rpm. Accompanied by a 0 to 60 time of 6.9 seconds and a top speed of 142 miles an hour. That's an improvement of 8 horsepower and 30 pound feet of torque over its turbocharged Cooper S predecessor. A temporary overboost function can even dial up peak torque for the 2 liter and 1.5 liter to 221 pound feet and 169 pound feet, respectively. Of course, being a bigger car, the Clubman is not going to be quite as quick as a Cooper hardtop, but it still delivers plenty of get up and go when you need it. The dual exhaust system on the S emits the characteristic crackles and pops we've come to expect from higher performance minis for endless fun on revs and downshifts. With a 13.2 gallon fuel tank and required premium unleaded, expect to see upwards of 24 miles to a gallon in the city and 34 on the highway for the S, while the three cylinder is rated between 25 miles to a gallon in the city and 34 on the highway. All of those numbers are with the automatic transmission, the manual is slightly less. Minis have always had fun, quirky interiors, but with the newest generation of Coopers, they've taken a big leap in both quality and appointments. The environment's look and feel is more BMW-like, which is definitely a good thing when you take a moment to examine all of the additional soft-touch material, upholstery options, premium finishers, modern technology, and luxury features. Since the Clubman is now being developed as its own entity, it's no longer restricted by the limitations of using the hardtop's chassis. This allowed designers and engineers to create a bespoke interior that emphasizes a real sense of width and openness without losing the Mini spirit, leading to a more unique identity while also significantly increasing versatility in a number of respects. Considering how much more interior room there is for both the front and rear passengers, the new Clubman is the most practical Mini currently available. The new 5-door layout allows the Clubman to now carry up to 5 people comfortably. The previous Clubman was limited to just 4 people in a relatively intimate environment. My favorite thing about Minis is how customizable they are. There's a handful of upholstery options including cloth, leatherette, and premium leather in addition to a handful of colors such as blue, gray, and black. Artestra's cross-punch pure burgundy leather combines diamond perforations and a surrounding dynamica band. The general attention to detail is segment leading. I love the toggles and center stack, chrome and high gloss black trim, and the seamless blend of horizontal and elliptical elements. The ergonomics are pretty straightforward. 
While not equipped here, the Clubman now offers power adjusting front seats as an option for the first time, including memory settings for the driver. While a convenient touch, the manual controls remain easy and intuitive, there's also manual thigh extensions and extra lumbar support. Heated seats are optional. These sports seats are standard on the Cooper S, as is a manual tilting telescoping steering wheel. Open up the glove box and you'll find a pretty decent amount of space with a damped lid so you don't have to worry about it hitting your leg. It also has illumination inside. As shown here, the anthracite headliner remains an option, which replaces the standard satellite gray headliner for a sportier, more upscale feeling cabin. As far as safety, there's eight dual stage airbags, including two front, two side impact, two side curtain, and two knee airbags. The panoramic sunroof is optional. As you can see, the dash is the real focal point of the Clubman's interior styling. I love how the trim encircles everything with the pointed air vents, it just looks awesome. So let's go and see if she sounds, both sitting still and on the road. Let's go and shut her up and check out the interior features. The standard audio system consists of six speakers and includes HD radio, USB, iPod integration, and Bluetooth technology. Our tester's optional 12-speaker 410-watt Harman Kardon system introduces concert-like audio quality and clarity. Unlike the previous generation Mini, the speedometer has permanently been fixed to the steering column. The center-mounted pipe plate theme continues though, but has been adapted to house the two available Mini-connected infotainment systems. Surrounding the display is a wickedly cool LED light strip that serves many functions from following the tachometer and radio volume to ambient lighting and drive mode selection. 
The 6.5 inch display you see here is standard and does not come equipped with navigation. However, the last Mini we checked out had the optional 8.8 inch display, so if you'd like to see how the other system works along with the navigation, check the link in the top right hand corner of this video. The system is basically Mini's variant of BMW's excellent iDrive system. Here's a controller in the center console with shortcut buttons. The larger screen with navigation adds a touchpad controller that can accept written commands. It takes a bit of practice to get used to compared to a typical touchscreen, but there's a ton of cool features built in, including some mini specific bits. All in all, it's a great system and quite a bit improved over its predecessor's optional system. All of the pillars are wrapped in soft cloth, there's hands-free Bluetooth microphones to either side, and padded visors. On the driver's side you have an auxiliary visor to the left hand side here for a bit of extra protection, in addition to your main visor. You also have illuminated vanity mirrors. Up in the top stack, a manually dimmed rear view mirror comes standard and you have a bank of toggles that correspond to the interior illumination, reading lamps, sunroof, as well as your ambient lighting. The reading lamps are located to the outer edges, they're all LED, sunroof control there, and your ambient lighting. Push it forward and backward to change the colors. Once back, the window deflector automatically pops up. Continuing down the center stack right beneath the infotainment system is a dual zone electronic automatic climate control system. Temperature to either side, different zones, fan speed in the middle. There's three stage heated seats in this particular model for both the driver and passenger, front and rear defrost, automatic recycling and everything and max AC. Down in the very bottom we have a 12 volt power outlet, your auxiliary, USB integration, little storage tray and two adjustable cup holders. Continuing on back, the electronic parking brake and the controls to the infotainment system and a full padded armrest. It's actually a two-tier design. You have a small bit of storage in there for a cell phone or something similar in size. And at the very bottom, you have a little bit more space. As far as the steering wheel, to the left-hand side, you have your cruise control, right-hand side, hands-free telephone and dialing, and audio controls. Right towards the back is your front and rear wipers. To the left-hand side, Turn signals, high beams, and driver information system that shows up at that little digital display in the bottom of the speedometer. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and shut her down. And we'll go ahead and hop in the back seat, check out overall space and amenities. As a former owner of the previous generation Clubman, I've been really excited to check this vehicle out for quite a while now because I've always liked the, the unique styling and stuff and the fact that you've got some extra practicality than you would get in a typical Cooper hardtop, but this vehicle is so much better of an offering. It's a far more practical people hauler. I mean, you have two full-size doors back here, so much extra interior room, extra cargo space. I mean, it's just, it's awesome. I mean, with a comfortable seating position for myself up front, I'm five foot ten. I probably have four and a half, maybe five inches of leg space and about an inch and a half of head space. It's also pretty comfortable back here. The lower cushion is on the firm side. There's plenty of padding where it matters the most and just some pretty good lower back support for longer trips. In the middle, you have a fold down armrest, all wrapped in leather in this model, two cup holders, and you can also seat up to five people in the clubman. You gotta get around this little drivetrain hump right here but in the middle you really don't lose any headspace compared to the outer portions I mean if anything you lose maybe half an inch or so but it's a pretty functional vehicle overall you can probably sit three full-size adults I would imagine if anything you might fight for a little bit of shoulder space but there's plenty of leg space for everybody as far as amenities back here there's plenty of storage you have seat back storage pockets good pockets across the door handle right here up top, grip handles, code hooks, reading lamps, and this beautiful, very open panoramic sunroof. The back portion is fixed. The front one opens like a typical sunroof back and forth, but you do have these sunshades you can bring back and forth. 
It doesn't entirely block out the sun, it still allows a lot of natural light to come into the interior, but it diffuses it a bit if you didn't want it so bright like on a hot sunny day. In the bottom of the console here you have two adjustable air vents as well as a 12 volt power outlet. Like we talked about up front, minis are very customizable vehicles and almost bespoke in a way. It's very unique for this particular class. Build quality is fantastic. I mean, the previous generation was really good, but this one is just, it's so much more. I mean, you have a lot of soft touch material across the door panels, across the upper portion, the armrest, and the middle portions here. I love the gloss black and all the chrome highlights everywhere. It still gives that classic mini feel. Across the seats, I mean, this optional interior package is just beautiful. You have these diamond quilted perforated accents, the, the Dynamica portions, the color accent stitching. It's just, it's a beautiful package overall. That's about it. Fairly simple interior, highly customizable, excellent build quality, and very fun to look at. So, let's go and check out Cargo Space. One of the Clubman's strong points has always been an added degree of practicality over the Cooper hardtop. The split rear doors open up wide to allow easy fitment of large items. Each door also has a storage pocket for smaller items. Those merits of course continue for the 2016 model, only now the Clubman boasts a significant increase in cargo space that puts it as having more total storage space than what you get in a Countryman. Compared to the previous generation Clubman, which carried 9.3 cubic feet of space behind the rear seat and a total of 32.8 cubic feet with the seat folded, the new Clubman carries 17.5 cubic feet and 47.9 cubic feet respectively. There's a removable privacy cover, additional netted storage pockets to either side, LED illumination, cargo hooks, tie downs, and even a 12 volt power outlet. If that's not enough, a storage cabinet located underneath the trunk floor provides even more cargo carrying ability. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the 2016 Mini Cooper Clubman S. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's always a lot more where that came from. Take care everyone.